Welcome back to the channel, anyone that's rejoining. Today's little little vid is going to be on chainsaw blade changes. Loads of stuff to do with these up here. There's lots of trees to cut and trim and get ready for logging, etc. I remembered when I bought my first chainsaw, I don't know how many years ago, which was this one. I think when they were first, when they first bought these around, it was from Screwfix for another one or two little jobs after that felling some some small tree so, it's changed the blade on it because this is driving me insane it's as blunt as anything now it's like cutting it with a butter knife um, you know now to adjust it but how do you change it does this part come off do i take this off went online quick and i was just flooded with videos of bish bash bosh like didn't explain anything very well thought well i need to sharpen these blades up and whatnot anyway why don't i make a quick video that I could put into a playlist on the channel. A, because I'm going to feature any of the equipment we're using, any maintenance, you know, whether it be strimmers, like hand equipment up here, hedge trimmers, you know, any maintenance on those as well. So I thought I'll do this. A, for making a playlist to go on the channel. And B, it might help someone else out there just to go through it bit by bit, what tools you can use. I mean, it's pretty basic, don't get me wrong. When I first changed this blade on here, I thought, why on earth did I even bother trying to research it? But anyway, that was me. So yeah, I'm gonna make this little video to just run through it, have a look at the different ones, and um, do a bit of sharpening as well, just the way that I sharpen them. Some, everyone's got their own way, I suppose. I might end up be doing it the wrong way, but it seems to work. Fancy any of that? Stick around and I'll run through one and, um, well, I might do the others, but we'll see. We'll just, we'll, we'll focus on this one first and then I'll just give a glance around. You can see they're all basically the same. Okie dokie. Little Titan. To be honest with you, this is one of my favourite saws out of these because it is so lightweight, but it's not quite as compact as the steel, but... As far as a cheap chainsaw goes, like I said, I have not had to do anything to this since I bought it all those years ago, and I've used it quite a lot since we've started this project up here. It's not as powerful as the steel, I wouldn't say. Nowhere near as powerful as this one, and definitely not that one. So yeah, right, let's get to it. Now, any chainsaw you buy will come with a basic chainsaw tool, like that, right? Okay, so first off, on these Titans, for instance, same as most, um, give that a clean out quick. On here is a little slot, all right? One way we'll tighten it, one way we'll loosen it. Is loosen it a little bit first, just a, just a smidge. That's a smaller type on here. Just a quick nip and a nip on there like that. More often than not. I mean, you could, you know, if you haven't got one of these, just use a socket. Um, I think, I don't know what they are, 13 mil or something. You get them to a certain point, and they're finger tight. That there. Now, this whole section here, literally, it just comes away like that. This does need a bit of a clean, because I have used it for quite a lot of, um, of cutting up, so I'll... Just give it a quick brush out and that. Um, so that's what you're left with there. It's just floppy now, as you see, like that. Flop it back to there. Just be careful, obviously. Slack as that. And then just unhook, just gently. You don't need to rush. Just checking things along the way. Around there like that, and that's off. Now, there's your bar. Again, I try and I, I like to give everything a quick clean before I put anything back together. So I'll just do that now. Do a quick, uh, quick scrub up. Right, give it everything a quick blow out. You know, you're not going to clean the whole thing out there's no point to waste of time now 
to put the other blade back on, repeat the same process. It's a, it can, I suppose it can feel a little bit trickier. Um, slide your bar on like that. Put it all the way back as far as it will go. Take note, I always just take note, when I take the chain off of any saw, lay it down flat the same way that it came off because then you can't go wrong of putting it on the wrong way around. I use Oregon um, chains. It, you, it does tell you on there. And in fact, to be fair, when you look at this, the way the teeth run, you, you, you do well to put it the wrong way around. You can just see. You can see how it locks in around there. But just that's a little tip. Just take note of that. So we'll just slide it back over like that. I usually go on the top first. Just get it to sit in the, the little channel on the bar. It is worth mentioning that on here, when you've taken it off, this little slider, wind it back so it's not putting too much load on when you first try and try and put it back together. When you're putting it back together, you've got a hole there and a hole there. This one, for instance, goes in the bottom slot. So just eye it up in there. Now, that's there. Just put these. Just put these back in, finger tight, just to stop the cover coming back off whilst you're messing about, take the slack out of there. Now, right, so, just tension it up. That's a little bit too much. Just to, just nip it enough so that you could still move the bar if you needed to, like that. It just wiggles out ever so slightly. And then just start tensioning it up. I mean realistically you could do with it being in a vice but if you haven't got a vice i've literally just thrown an old door on some trestles because it acts as a workbench why not you'll get the same result at the end of it just make sure that it all stays in the in the in the channel on the bar before you go absolutely crazy like that and what you'll see then if I can get this, you would just see it start to, you know, there you go, slack out there. Now, one thing I did when I did my first chain was I thought, yeah, loads of loads of tension in there, that's fine. When you do these up, it will tighten up more. So I usually get it. So you've got just enough movement. So so it's not hard to pull, just enough so that the um it wouldn't come out of the guide on the bar all right then go in nip these up i always do the front first i don't know if it matters which way you do it that one first good still a little bit of slack and then the back one just nipped, don't need to tighten it so much it's going to break anything. So what we've got now is it's not loose and flopping around, but it has got a little bit of movement. Now with a new chain, this is a, this was a new chain um, last month. They do stretch a bit, all right? Whenever you're using it, right, check every time you're going to use it, just so uh, nothing, because if they get a bit too loose, it will come off. That's personal experience. <laughs> you got you know, you only learn when mistakes happen, don't you? So yeah, that's lovely. That is, that's perfect. Just a bit of slack in it, not too much so that it'll jump out. Now that's the changing the chain. Very basic, like I said. If you want to stick around, I'm going to show you how sharpen um, the blades when they're getting a bit blunt. This is the way that I would sharpen a blade. Everyone's got their own ways. What I would do. Take a piece of chalk. I mean, Tipex would be better, but I haven't got any. On the one there, right? Now, like I said, this this was a new blade a month ago, and I've done a bit of cutting with it. It's getting a bit blunter now. 
you can feel it. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to mark there on that teeth, cut the blade that's in front of you. For instance, you can see with your own eyes that the angle follows that way. And you're going to want a file the right size. You can, get, you can buy uh, a kit of uh, chainsaw um, sharpening files. Make sure it's the right size so it fits in there. Because you've got a piece, a cutting blade on this side, and a, 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 like a top bit on here. So you're going to want one that sort of fits in and does both. Now what you do is just keep it at roughly the same angle as what it is. Um, and just, if you want to sharpen it, you just push with force, you know, follow the angle, push with force that way, but don't, just no force on the way back. Just one, two, three. And you'll see it shine up. When it's shiny, nine times out of ten, that's it. So we've got that one there. This one here. One, two, three. That one needs a fourth. Just to shine it up. What we'll do, we'll put a mark this side, same as what we've done on that side. So when it comes back round, and you can you know you can see where you've been really. Um, there'll be a shine on the ones you've sharpened, and these ones are dull. So start on when that mark comes back round. Same again this way round. Use your best judgment and just go forwards with it. Got that one there. Yeah, I'm happy with that one. So, yeah, there we go there. It does help because the chain's dirty, you see. So, but just grabbing a bit that one. Nice, clean. Again, if you had a voice. It'd be great because it hold it all still. But if you haven't, if you're out doing something, if you're out doing something, you ain't got a voice. You know, you go off and end up doing this on the floor. I just thought I'd set it up on a table for purpose of this video, make it a little bit easier. It's a pretty quick process. You know what I mean? It should only take you. Five minutes to do sharpen both sides. Again, this is the way I do it. I've seen lots of videos of that, and it, you could spend ages trying to um, get it absolutely perfect. At the end of the day, right? As long as it's sharp enough to cut the wood that you're trying to cut, that's feeling lovely. That is. Um, why does it matter which way you bloody do it? See all these fancy tools and that you can buy now. I mean, you'll only sharpen a blade a few times um, before it's worn out. So, this is how I've learned to do it. Put a bit of swarf on there. But yeah, I'll uh, finish these up. A bit more blunted it quite a bit to be fair i mean again these are cheap chains they are like 17 pounds a pop from screw fix so you can't expect them to last too long stay sharp for too long okay so that's just a quick do on uh how I sharpen the blade and also just a quick change in the chain. I don't know if anyone will find it helpful or useful. That's the way I do it. And I suppose the, the next question is, do we want to see this cut in something?
now I've sharpened it, I want to go and probably is I haven't got a video or anything showing what it was like before. It was all right, but it was taking a while to cut through limbs that are only sort of, you know, that thick. Do you know what? I'm going to well, do a cold start on it as well. Show what they start like, these little titans. It is, what is it today? It's got to be, oh, it's got to be about five, five degrees or so, six degrees at a push. So... I'll do a quick bit on that, I'll get it started, do a little bit of cutting with it, just to see the difference, um, and hear the saw, to be fair. These here, I'm going to do again, I'm just going to do a quick sharpen up on them, check the chains are tight, so I know that I know they all start and run, um, so I don't need to bother with that. So I'll do a little bit of cutting with this, I'll go back down to that tree that's fallen down the bottom, and I'll just do a little bit of cutting. To be honest, when I try and watch a video on something and I like to hear the saw working as well see what they sound like they, they like I said it's not the most powerful saw in the world but it does the job it's quite a high pitched um, whine when you're going at it but brilliant little saw if any if anyone was looking for a cheap chainsaw I would I would I would recommend having one of these it you know it's just an all-round decent little saw. It's not not proper professional or anything, but it will get the job done. Um, if when you know if you suddenly need need to cut something medium size up, it will be fine. Another thing that I've just thought of is why not go through the process of starting the chainsaw, mixing the fuel up and whatnot. I don't know whether it might be foreign to people, um, but just run you through quick what to do. So let's get into that. Now this little Titan this tells you your fuel mixture, 40 to 1, all right? In case anyone hasn't got a clue what 40 to 1 is, one of these is really helpful because you've got your fill line there, all right? So what we'll do, just quickly do this. There we go, one more, there we go. See, I don't know if it's hard to see on camera. I bet it is, you're a little bit far away. I haven't got a very good lens. Um, that's up to the, the petrol fill line. Now we need a 40 to 1 mix. Two stroke engine oil, it's either blue, a lot of it's blue these days, but I'm used to it being red. So what we'll do now, the 40 to 1 mark is there. So we just dribble this in until that line comes up to there. These mixing bottles never seal properly these cheap jobbies i don't know if the more expensive ones do just make sh don't need to go crazy with it do it so tight that it cracks a just get it consistent you know there we go that's all mixed in there now lovely job actually putting it in the saw some of them like this titan for instance it's got this here this comes in handy for that as well. You put it in the gap because they're always tight and just yeah, nip that off of there. Saves you killing your fingers. Should use a uh, funnel really, but I'm not going to because I can't be bothered to go and get one. I always hold it on an angle a bit. Again, take your time. Don't need to go pouring it everywhere. I'll just put half in there. Do it up by hand, don't tighten it up with that because you'll end up splitting it or just wearing the seal out on the on the cap quicker than what it needs to. Same again, chainsaw oil, whenever you, well me anyway, if I put a whole tank of fuel in, I'll put a whole, um, top it up all the way with the chainsaw oil. Um, I'll put half a tank in it. <coughs> so, I will put half in here because it pretty much uses it at the same rate as what it uses the fuel on this model anyway change the oil isn't the nicest to be honest with you but it's got to be there same again don't do it up too tight so that's that now that's that's them on there for instance on this steel slightly different you see again this comes in handy because you can put it in there. That'll do the fuel. Tighten it up by hand. 
and the same on the oil. Uh, where are we? This Husqvarna, cool. for instance, this can't do any of that, but they are built so that the small end for the chainsaw oil will go in there and undo that. Don't do it too tight. This side has the bigger slot, so you use the bigger end for the fuel on there, like so. Same process, always find out what ratio fuel mixture you need. And this one, this is, you know, this is old school, this one. This one has got normal, um, normal lid, all right. And then this one, for instance, is different again. Finger, but if it's too tight, it has got a slot to put the chainsaw tool in. So, honestly, the chainsaw tool will do everything you need other than sharpening the blade on your chainsaw. So don't throw it away. I wonder if I'm stupid to try and start this on this bench because it is a little bit dodgy. <sighs> Usually you would start it on the floor with your foot on it, in here. But I might try it anyway. We'll see what happens. Always important, before you start the saw, um, click your safety in, just in case. On this Titan, for instance, you've got your on and off switch, off at the bottom, on at the top. You've got your, your choke, and that will pick the revs up automatically as well. Give it a pump. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bear in mind, it's very cold today. I really don't think I should be doing it this way, but for all intensive purposes, let's just see if we can do anything with it. Uh, mm, it might be all right. It is cold. Right. I think if I put the choke back in, it's still on throttle. It's got some fuel in the carb now. It should go in a couple of pulls. So this is pretty thick and damp still, only fell down a month or two ago. So it'll be a good little test for that sharpen up on that chain and a bit of uh, footage of the sound of the saw, what it's like when it's cutting them and what have you. I'll just chop a few bits up, not going to go too mad. Um, just give a little test. So gloves on at minimum safety specs. I always wear specs. I'm not a fan of wearing those um, the helmets and the the visor and stuff unless I'm in the cage with stuff like near and above my head. That's when I'll use those. So yeah, right. Let's get her fired up and um, get a bit of bit of cutting done for you. Okay, so that's that. The blade change, the sharpening, and which well, to be fair, a little review, really, isn't it? Um, on this this little Titan, like I said earlier, for what it is and the cost of it, 
it is a brilliant little saw as you can see in the footage though it does just need a little bit more power just to power through those slightly tighter little bits okay line the mill cheap and cheerful anyone watching found any of this useful helpful i just thought i'd uh yeah make a little bit to go out there for the channel um on some uh, you know a bit of bit of basic maintenance on some um some of the equipment that i'm going to be using and will be using in the future thanks for thanks for joining and i'll see you on the next one